What's in your brand? This is a critical this is a critical question for small and medium business owners who are trying to develop their company and build their brand. And I just happen to be here today with uh, John Brand, marketing expert and the CEO of Brand Design. Uh, John, a little bit about Brand Design. Hi, uh, Brand Design is a full service advertising agency located in Warrington, Virginia. We serve uh, Maryland, DC, um, several other states around the country. We've been in business about 18 years now and uh, we started in 1994. Great. And we do every form of marketing that there's to offer pretty much. Great. And we're here to talk about branding today. And I guess with a name like John Brand, you didn't have much of a career choice. <laughs> I was actually born into born into the business. Born branding, into the yeah. business. And named that way too. Yeah. Great. Well, great. Uh, you know, recently we rebranded our company to be Sigma Business Management. And I, you know, after doing that, I realized that it's not just a matter of just changing the name on the door and saying, hey, we're here, right? You spent a few years putting all this stuff into your brand and putting up your website and your Facebook page and stuff, and you got to go through and do that. So just a, a question about rebranding. Uh, you know, sometimes when you start a business, you don't have the full scope of what you're going to be doing. And so as things change and market opportunities open, you may change things that may not be reflective. What kind of things do you look at when you when a client approaches you and talks about rebranding, whether it's a small rebrand kind of adjustment or whether it's a major renaming and rebranding? I tell you, it's rebranding a company is a very difficult decision, and, and for for a couple main reasons. One, it's expensive. I mean, you've invested thousands of hours of time and thousands of dollars of money into a, an image, a building an image and that your customers will will kind of grasp hold of, and then all of a sudden you change that image. That's part one. Part two, once you change the image, will your customers still remember you? You don't want to lose customer base because you've now changed your image. Right. So you have to, if you're going to rebrand, you have to look at the pros and the cons and really decide whether it's something you want to do. Um, changes in your market, changes in your industry, changes in your product, all these are good reasons to rebrand. I mean, if, you, if you're promoting a product under one logo and one image and theme, and all of a sudden you're, you're no longer promoting that product, you're promoting it something else, which is totally different, then your logo, your theme no longer matches what you're, not, you're now promoting. So you have to be able to do it. Another, another reason why you might be rebranded is that let's say you have, a, you have an image and a logo, but you've not registered it, and somebody else has got the exact same one, and they have registered it. Now you're going to get sued by that company for using their logo. So that's a good time yeah. to rebrand. So, so those those are the kind of things that you do. Those are kind of reasons that you use for rebranding. Um, some uh, logos and um, uh, slogans they get old, they get dated, and right. people, uh, companies move on, their industries move on. So yeah, that's, then it's a good time to look at rebranding your company. So um, rebranding is a, is an important part of a process of of, of the growth of a company. Um, you start off here, and as you check and evaluate where your company exists. And in specific points in time, that's when you decide, okay, now it's time to move on and do something like that. Yeah, that's that's a great point, especially when the change in scope. I remember in the, I guess it was probably mid to late 90s uh, when uh, NTW kind of started up. And NTW is, I, I guess eventually it's NTB or National Tire Battery or whatever right. it is. But it started as, I think, NT or National Tire or something right. like that. And then within a year, they started doing batteries as well. Well, now they kind of had to add the batteries. So I think right. that's what became MTB. And then as they added more car repairs, you know, then it, then do you keep adding letters? Or do you, <laughs> so I exactly. think they ended up uh, branding as MTB, and, you know, we, we manage cars. But, the, you know, the main thing there is, is consider that change in scope as you're doing it. But then there may be a time when, uh, whether it's because just the brand's old and you want to kind of do some things, to kind of up, update it and use that because that's a great marketing tool, right? That's it's absolutely. a great marketing message. And to, advertisers to do campaign. different things too. Um, advertisers go through these genres where they start doing similar things. Right. And, you know, we're we're in that business. We see other advertisers doing it, so we start to follow along. And so there's a period of time when everybody's using the acronyms. You know, you have the IBMs, you have the AT&Ts, yep. and they all have. Well, over time, that changes. And AT&T, take a look at theirs. Theirs was AT&T, and that was it. Now it's AT&T, and of course they've got the emblem. Yes. The, the world logo. So they wanted to look global, worldly. So they changed, started changing their philosophy, which helped to change their brand. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. And the, um, you know, yeah, the rebranding decision can be a little bit tough. Absolutely. What do you think about branding, you know, products within your company? 
Um, I know, you know, bigger, I mean, somebody like Procter & Gamble, I mean, each one of their product lines is a brand. That's correct. Um, and I've seen some smaller companies try to do that, but, I don't know, mixed results, I guess. How, what do you recommend when people are looking at uh, branding multiple things instead of rebranding, maybe uh, just branding I think product? I think each product should be branded. Okay. And if you can brand it to, um, to closely relate to your corporate brand, that's wonderful if you can do that. Um, it's sometimes very difficult to do because different products have different ways and shapes and forms and themes and so it's really kind of hard to put that all together and make it just like the corporation because that right. has its own global thing. So, but I definitely think branding a product and giving it its own look and feel and image, um, that's something that's um, I think highly effective okay. for, uh, for promoting a product. Good. Well, John, I know uh, over the last few months you've kind of gotten into a, a new endeavor, I guess, and really right. goes along that online, you know, an online it video, does. which which we really like. And so, uh, Alyssa, if you have the um, slides for the uh, chamber video, um, if you could bring those up. I know you kind of spent some time branding on this. We have. And yeah. you want to tell us a little bit about chamber video and, and how it helps companies brand? Sure. Uh, chamber video is an online video directory for businesses. Um, we create a directory that's categorized so that a customer, consumer can um, find um, a business online in a, in a specific directory or, or shopping center warehouse type uh, atmosphere. And so you can see uh, by some of the, uh, uh, on your screen here that that button with the, with the triangle, the play button, and the, yeah. the motion sensing or the, the sound sensors out to the side, that's how we branded this particular product. And then we use it in our brochures, we use it online, we use it in our email blasts, the same exact look. And now we have several products. We have um, Chamber Video is one of the products, but we also have um, Corporation Video and Association Video. And they all look very similar, they just have different colors to represent right. those different products. So, and I also noticed in there a little bit of co-branding. Uh, with, uh, with that's one of the cha local chambers. Yeah, this particular product works with membership organizations. So, um, with Chamber Video, we can promote our product to numerous um, membership organizations and numerous chambers. So, this particular one is with the Falkir Chamber. We kind of use their brand and our brand together to promote that product. Mm -hmm. That's great. And and I, I, you seem to be noticing some co-branding type things more and more. Uh, I, you know, just off the top of my head. Uh, you know, Taco Bell and Doritos, right? Mm -hmm. Both Pepsi company, right? Yep. But they're doing the Doritos um, shell for their sure. tacos, right? So a lot of that co-branding can be um, a pretty good way to take two different brands, but they're two very strong brands, and then bring them in and co-brand them and, and get a, and leverage that effect. So, uh, good. Uh, Alyssa, any, any, any questions from the audience? We are launching a new service. Should we brand it separately or rebrand to include it? Covered that a little bit, but I'm not quite sure. I totally. Well, understand. you know, so for instance, um, I mean, just what, what what I'm doing here, right? So we're kind of launching the new TV show. Right. You know, is that something that we should rebrand, or just brand that TV show, or is that something we should rebrand the whole company around? so that it includes that service as well. It's a product within your company. I would say brand it as your uh, service, your product Okay. first. If you can draw some parallels between that and your company image, then do that. If you can bring the two together somehow, show that there is a relationship between your product or your service and your company and what, and what they do, then try to do that if you can. But um, always keep in mind that you want this product and service is going to be seen by people um, the public and you want to make sure that it has it it stands out on its own too so right. Right. well that's good that's good information as far as uh, putting those brands together and when you look at some of the bigger companies you know even like General Motors you know they have different lines of vehicles that mm -hmm. they brand completely separate absolutely so really this the branding's not just a I think we all kind of enter it as small business owners probably a little bit lightly uh, more so than we should. Oh, it's extremely important to a business. I mean, I, it's one, well, of course, I'm in the business. So right. I'm, but I, I, I know I've been doing this for 23 years now, and I've seen brands break a company. I've seen brands make a company. So it really depends how well you do this, um, and you want to do it to the best of your ability. You know, work with professionals, um, Jamie, and other professionals in the business, and you know, to to really get that your message out, and your theme out, and your look and feel out. Good. And don't forget to back it up with great service, right? Because that's that, right. in Absolutely. the end, that's really what, what builds the Absolutely. brand. Well, great, John. Hey, I, I really uh, thank you for being here. And I just, I just got to ask you, besides brand design, what's your favorite brand? 
Oh my goodness, that's a great <laughs> question. Um, I see so many. It's very difficult to to just that one stands out. But I guess um, you know, I do like a lot of what the dot com companies do. I, I just think they're very innovative. So you look at something like an E Trade or or um, Nike or something like that. I just love what they do. They, they're, they're very inspirational, very emotional. Branding is about emotion and drawing and listening emotions right. out of your clientele. And that's what sticks with them to have them remember your brand. So emotions are really play a key role into it. Yeah, and you look at some, you know, something like Google, right? I mean, mm -hmm. just the fun way that they do Absolutely. Google, that they change it every time. I mean, that's part of their brand and change. They do. And it's what it's they do. wonderful. So it's, it's great. So, yeah, probably everybody has their favorite brand and the reason why. And there's some real popular ones. And and your brand will also have value. It adds value to your company. And in that name recognition, you know, if you go to sell later or anything, uh, certainly that brand you'll you'll find that it has value. I'd also like to add, I'd love I love all my clients' brands. Absolutely. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just got to. I wanted to get that in. Thanks, That's clients. a good point. Thanks, clients. <laughs> um, well, John, hey, thanks so You're much welcome. for being here today. I appreciate all the great information, and, and you know that we're about helping people be better at business, and, and I think this will help them do that today. Absolutely. Uh, you know, certainly, if you found this information useful, uh, feel free, please share it with your colleagues, share it with your friends, or share it with your clients if you're a business professional. And uh, but most of all. Uh, take the information of the day and somehow take that back and use it so that you can be better at business today. Uh, next week we're going to be with Paul Goff. Uh, we're going to talk about health care. Uh, Paul is an insurance agent with the Puffenberger Agency here in Northern Virginia. And we're going to be talking through health care reform and some of the things and really in a non-political way talk about health care reform and how it's going to affect business or how it could affect your business and your bottom line uh, over the upcoming years. So. Thanks for joining us today and uh, be better at business.